Very frequently, I am approached by uh, players of relatively uh, a lower uh, uh, c category, and they ask me questions. You know, I was stunned by the opening my opponent played, the opening I have never seen, and I don't know what to do and how to play against it. And most of the time, it bad opening that was chosen by their opponents. Now what went wrong in the game that you played against bad opening? The only thing that can go wrong in the first in the early stage of the game is your approach to this opening. Now we our topic is bad openings and how to play against them because why not to play not to play them it's very easy i can tell you just don't play bad openings and that's it we don't need to make any material on it but suppose your opponent plays what is the right approach to bad openings in order to answer this question we have to know the definition of the bad openings. There are some openings that are not bad, but the white gets some advantage, but uh, uh, b the other side has, one side has some advantage, the other side has some counterplay. That's not a bad opening. That's the opening maybe I shouldn't recommend to play, but it's okay to play if you really like it, you played and you know how to play it. But bad openings are the openings that will give your opponent, a, that they give you a bad, bad position in the early stage of the game. And sometimes it's not necessarily very bad positions, it's worse positions, but without a counterplay. There is no upside to this opening. You're playing, you're getting worse position, there is, you have no counterplay. Now there is no specific order we can um, uh, look at this opening at. So randomly, let's start with e4, e5. Knight f3, d5. This is so called. Some of these openings that real bad openings. I don't. I never even heard of names, because names they go by the countries they played on. So, in the one country they call one opening. In the, the other country they call the other name. So this, I just learned recently that it's called elephant gambit. Well, I know Sicilian uh, opening, I know uh, Queen's Gambit, uh, King's Indian, but Elephant Gambit is a rather odd name. But that's what this opening's opening goes by. Now, this is definitely wrong because when black in a very early stage, originating early stage on move two, quick contact in the center being a tempo down because they play black that cannot be right well and what is the right approach for white right approach for white in this opening is pure simplicity there are several ways to play this opening it almost there is there is almost no bad way to play it so one way is e takes d, the other way is d4, and the third, uh, well actually this is two good continuations. Of course you can play knight c3, but you don't have really, you don't have to expect really good positions because black can go d4 or d takes e. But the, one of the... Uh, competitive and very actually um, uh, 
<coughs> very ambitious approach is ED or D4. I have played many times and I in my opening DVDs I suggest D4 and I played it many times but that's not necessarily the best continuation. They're the simplest continuations and you don't want to spend too much time learning this opening. And if black plays D takes E you simply go knight takes E5 and bishop D6 you go bishop C4 attacking F7 square. The best approach for black is to play bishop takes e5 and now you go queen h5 move that's the variation I have played uh, uh, some blitz games and I have never had this opening in a tournament g game because no one uh, of the, no uh, reason uh, reasonably good player will play this opening for black in a tournament game queen h5 Queen e7, queen takes e5, and after exchange of queens, that's what I recommended, knight c6, bishop f4, and if you are interested in further analysis of uh, this opening, you can uh, uh, look in uh, our edition of Encyclopedia and you will see it there. But, but there are some other more uh, ambitious approach and preparing to make this DVD for the bed openings e4 e5 knight f3 d5 I realized that ed well actually I knew that but I didn't uh, never I never put a reasonable, a reasonable uh, amount of time exploring it uh, ed may be more even more ambitious approach to this. Uh, there are several ways black can go. Black can go here actually either bishop d6 or e4. Well I have here a couple of quick games to show you. They are all very very short games and you may want to play this way. Um, after bishop d6 d4. This was played game with white by the grandmaster. e4, knight e5. You see they always get this simple approach to the opening. They don't try to win in the opening. They try to get with a minimum minimum effort they try to get uh, advantage and then they relay on their strength and their ability. And after knight e7, knight c3, trying simply to play bishop c4 and maintain an extra pawn. And um, after knight c3, black played bishop b4, trying to get d5 pawn. But after bishop b5, c6, d takes c, b takes c, and bishop to c4. Uh, why didn't want to play knight takes c6? Maybe f because of possible queen b6 or queen d5 with some complications. But simple bishop c4, castling and castling. I don't, I don't think we have to go any farther to see that white has an extra pawn and absolutely zero compensation for black. That cannot be recommended to, uh, for black. I don't want to go through whole game, but you can see that black is completely lost. Because, of course, you need still to play the game and to win. And, uh, but you see the clear result of the bad opening. Bad opening, bad position. Pawn down and black is totally lost. Now look at the other way to play for black which is e4 instead of bishop d6 in this position after e4 e5 knight f3 d5 e d e4 they were i can g show you some uh, some sample games for example e4 queen e2 it was played by uh, not by grandmaster, but relatively strong player, 2450 player, 
um, queen e2, and in one game, black played bishop e7, another move is queen e7. Not recommended knight f6 because of d3, but after bishop e7, queen takes a4, knight f6, queen e2. Now, this is very instructive to notice here. White, is, white has two extra pawns. Black plays knight takes d5, but now white is one pawn up and black never gets sufficient compensation. d4, castle, and very good move, queen d1. White is not trying for initiative. What they gonna do after bishop g4, they played bishop e2, and white has no problem concluding development with castling and developing rest of the pieces. Position development is approximately even. Black is down whole central pawn on d4. It's an extra pawn. Central pawn. In normal cases, in the hands of a decent chess player, uh, this is a winning position. And of course, that's all you can expect from the opening. That's a dream position for the opening. You came up with, you came out with the extra pawn and no compensation by the black. So let's look at queen e7 move. That's another way black will try to get some compensation. Knight f3, d5, e d4, queen e2, queen e7. Now that also, of course, does not offer black any any sufficient compensation. Knight d4, and now white simply wants to go d3, knight c3, because if white's queen blocks f1 bishop, same is with f8 bishop being blocked by black queen on e7. After knight d4, queen e5, knight b5 was played, knight a6, and now simply knight to c3. Where is black's compensation? There is absolutely no compensation at all. Knight f6, d4, and you see the result of the opening. Black has bad, bad position, and also they are pawned down. Queen f5, f3 was played, and on bishop b4, bishop d2. Black is absolutely lost. And after castling, f takes e, and black had to go queen g6, e5. White has two extra pawns, overwhelming position, and black is totally lost. This is good, good example of a very bad opening. Now, as I said, we can go through these openings uh, um, in any random order. And I'm not targeting these openings for e4 players. No, this is, in general, e4, d4, or c4 players. It's how to play against bad openings. And if we think about it, most of the bad openings, they are for black. Well, even if white goes first move a3, you cannot say it's bad opening. Bad opening is the one that will give you bad position. But since white has an extra tempo, they start first, they can play almost any first move without giving them bad position. Well, there are a3, for example, or some silly opening like h4. I will say they go to the category of not recommended openings. Not recommended, but openings that give you very bad positions, of course, we also don't recommend, but I would categorize them by bad openings, bad openings that give you bad positions. So again, continue uh, the list of 
bad openings. Let me give you, there is an opening that was very frequently was uh, um, um, popular, well, very frequently was played. I think it's the most playable in all list of bad openings is the Budapest Gambit. Budapest Gambit is uh, d4, knight f6, c4, e5, d, e, and black has two main moves, knight e4 and knight g4. Now, why is this bad opening? I think black, black gets here little worse position in every case, but they get do they have an upside? For example, if you get little bad position with the chances to organize some attack or to play for your opponent's weaknesses, if you are under attack, you try to uh, overcome attack and play against these weaknesses. In other words, we call it simply counter chances. Here, after knight g4, if white plays correctly, this opening, well, actually, not necessarily correctly. They, if white plays any reasonable way, so white can get, it go two different ways. Either go to a very ambitious to get big advantage in the opening or play very simple. Even if they don't know opening, they play very simple. They will get opening advantage anyway. So, for example, they can go knight f3 or bishop f4. Your pawn is hanging. That's the only thing you will uh, think of. Knight f3 and black goes for e5 pawn. Suppose they go bishop c5, we can go e3. And black goes knight c6. Okay, of course you can go queen d5 and play very ambitious way, but you can go knight c3. You know, even if black gets their pawn back, black will have slightly worse position, always. Now, this is the most conservative way white can play. I mean, you cannot play any more conservative. This position is better for white, because they have more control in the center and they have nicely placed, developed pieces. Uh, and, well, even if black plays like this, knight d4 followed by knight d5, white will have some advantage. This is the most conservative way. In other words, if we, if the best they can happen to you with black, you get slightly worse position, then this opening altogether makes no sense at all because there is no upside of it. Now, there is more ambitious way to play this opening, like bishop f4 and uh, knight c6, knight f3, bishop b4 check. Now we can go knight d2, and black easily gets their pawn back again. But they get their pawn back, but they never get close to equality. Because we can simply go a3, attacking the bishop. Well, of course, black can try a tricky way, knight takes e5, because on ab there is knight d3 mate. Well, if you are good enough to see mate in one, then you play e3 here. And if you are not good enough to see to notice mate in one, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, DVD and this material is not for you. So you go e3, and now bishop practically, or maybe you should take, you should take on e5 first, and then go e3. And now black is practically forced to take white's knight on d2, because if they go bishop c5, they're going to get hit with b4 and black is in 
trouble. So bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, after d6, bishop e2, castle. I have seen frequently strong players go for this position having two bishops and uh, 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 superior position after castling here. That's all they want. So now, where black gets um, uh, some uh, reasonably good counterplay and how you can justify this opening. Only way you can justify this Budapest Gambit for black if white does something silly and gets in trouble in the early stage of the game. But uh, that's not the way to approach the opening. So anything white does here makes a lot of the knight f3 or bishop f4. Those are the only moves that I know that could make any sense because I don't know if any move. Well, h3 makes no sense, although it's also okay for black, just a waste of time. Even here, white is doing okay. So there is absolutely no upside to play this opening. The other move in this position after d takes e is knight e4. And then again, there is absolutely no upside because we go a3, we try to stop bishop before check, a3, and no matter what black does, knight c6, knight f3, or even if they go d6, we simply develop knight f3, and uh, that's all you need to know. Now, if you want to look at the opening book and find most ambitious ways, of course, then you don't need to watch this DVD. I'm telling you, I'm showing you the simple approach to bad openings. How should we think? What is wrong with the way my opponent plays? If you trust your judgment enough, then you can always find good and quick solution.